Hey guys, Barbara here. I'm at home alone in the middle of the afternoon in the middle of the week. And mom just called me to give me this brilliant idea for a dinner menu. I'm so excited to make this because the items that I'm going to prepare are things that I've made at the show already, but I'm going to put them together to make a different menu. I'm going to be calling this one um, Oxtail Chili Hamburgers. I sat here to try to make up the name. It's like 12 20 in the afternoon you're gonna have to start early if you want this to be prepared for dinner for like around four or five in the evening so do this on one of your day offs or on the weekends when you have time off okay you're watching the bear pantry show the meat counter at the grocery store trying to find a cheap package of oxtail guys no dice at $7.99 a pound and in two pound increments I'm not gonna find anything for less than $16 so I may as well just suck it up bite and go home so here I am opening the package um, it's shrink wrapped for some reason I don't know why they do oxtails like this I'm just gonna rinse it off here with some distilled white vinegar and water and then I'm gonna season it only by putting some sea salt some black pepper and some powdered ricotta. Very simple. You guys can use the paste ricotta or the one that comes by block. You can use paprika if that's what you have on hand. I don't like paprika, so I never use it. So two to three tablespoons of olive oil or any cooking oil that you happen to have on hand or the ones that you like, and put the pieces in while the oil is hot. And they're only five pieces. Can you believe that? For $16, five pieces. While those get brown, let me work on the beans. One pound or one pack of pinto beans, all I'm gonna do is rinse it off in this colander right here and then dump it in this large, tall pot. It's big and it's tall. <laughs> and then fill it to about three fourths of the way with just plain water from the faucet. And I'm not gonna add any of my spices yet, okay? Just the water and the beans. I'm gonna use my double burner right here. It's big and it's gonna cook it pretty fast. Just set it here. Now let's check on our beef while they get brown. And you know that oxtail comes kind of like fat and cube. So you wanna brown the top and the bottom and then go on ahead and work on the sides, all right? Now, let me show you guys how I'm gonna make some broth. You don't have to use chicken broth for everything. The little bit of spice that's left behind in the bowl, just go ahead and add water to that, and then that's your broth, okay? I, I don't like eating food where they make, um, they put chicken broth on everything. So anyways, do the sides, see right here? This takes about 20 minutes to get this all brown and golden looking. Now I'm adding my little makeshift broth, and then I'm gonna add some more water from the faucet because I want this to boil, okay? Now this dish takes about three to four hours to make, but you don't have to stand here and babysit this. You can go sit down, watch TV, you know, do your crossword puzzle, edit your video, whatever you wanna do, but in one hour, come back and check on your pots, all right? And then add two cups of water to each of them. So this is the beans and this is the meat pot. And then cover it back up and allow it to cook some more. Let me show you the beans at an hour, see? They're more uncooked than cooked but I'm letting them go for another 20 minutes or so before I do this part right here. And what I'm doing is making my spice. Some minced garlic, some tomatoes, some chopped up onions, and some cilantro. And all I'm adding is one can of tomato sauce, not tomato paste. And I'm not using El Pato because that's hot and I'm gonna put chili powder in this beans so I don't want it to be overly hot. Just blend it on the Nutribullet base. And then now I'm gonna go over and add it to the pot. So this is about an hour and 40 minutes in and just add the wet stuff in and give it a stir it's not going to have any taste yet because we haven't added any salt yet here comes my powdered stuff this is one teaspoon of each salt black pepper cayenne and chili powder and if incidentally if you're cooking with um only sea salt you might want to consider adding kelp to your diet because that helps to replace some of the stuff that's missing from the regular salt okay i mean missing from the sea salt so here is the beans they're done so shut it off that's two hours and then continue cooking the beef for an hour. While that's going for the hour, let me make the homemade bread. Two tablespoons of active dry yeast. And if you're using the rapid rise, you don't have to activate it like this. This is one cup of warm water, the yeast, and one teaspoon of sugar. Give this a stir. 
and then set this aside for about eight minutes okay if you're trying to activate yeast and it's going longer than like eight minutes throw it away and start again because then your yeast is not good <laughs> So then nine cups of all-purpose flour, one quarter cup of sugar. With this little bit of sugar, this bread's not going to be too sweet and it's not going to last very long outside of the fridge, all right? About three to four days. A third cup of um, room temperature butter or melted butter will do. Don't put the butter in cold from the fridge because it's not going to work out great for you, okay? I'm going to use coconut milk because I don't have any evaporated milk, but normally for this bread I would use evaporated milk. Now my yeast is ready. I'm just going to go ahead and dump it in. And I want to spend some time today showing you guys how to make this. Even though I have this video at the side already, it's called Yeast Cakes if you're looking for it. I've heated the um, can of coconut milk um, for one minute in the microwave. Don't go longer than that because it's going to scald your hand when you're trying to do this, okay? So let me go ahead and just get this worked in. Use all the milk first before I start adding plain warm water. And by the way, if you guys suffer like with a touch of OCD or something, you're not going to like the way flour feels on your hands. So you might want to use like food service gloves when you're making bread. But I always just wash my hands clean and just use my hands because I love it. Now look at POV, point of view. My son Josh loves it when I show you guys this angle because you guys get to see firsthand what I'm seeing. Okay, And I want you to see this when it comes to bread because I wish that I could be there in your kitchen with you to just to just teach you how to make bread once you put your hand in the flour and I'm there to guide you you are never gonna go wrong again okay so here I am imagine I'm there with you in the kitchen hey Kendra <laughs> that's one of my wonderful viewers that watch all the time imagine I'm there with you teaching you how to do this okay so then dump it out after it's sticky enough I get my hands washed and uh, dried off not because they were dirty but because I don't want my hands to be sticky along with the dough so now there's no rhyme or reason to kneading. You just want to go ahead and squeeze, tuck, roll, pinch, and just let it form into a ball and be smooth. So I've added some flour because it's a little bit too sticky, but it's coming out pretty good, guys. I'm enjoying this part right here. I really love messing around with dough, okay? Now look at POV again. For those of you that watch my show, not for the food, but to see what I do behind the scenes and want to know what I use, I'm using a small camera, a Canon Elf 340 on a miniature tripod that I got over at Walmart. And that's what I have right in front of me sitting on the counter. And that's how you can see it like this, okay? Now I'm going to stretch this to a log and then use my big knife to cut it straight along the length. And you can use one of those um, dough cutting tools. I don't happen to have one of those. Cut them to the sizes that you want because this is the kind of bread that's only going to be allowed to rise once. So you want them in their shape um, immediately. So this is too big. Cut off a piece. And the top part of the bread is going to be my left hand while the bottom part's in my right hand. And all I'm doing is pinching and roll, pinch and roll, pinch and roll. And then put it down on the counter and just kind of flatten it out, smooth it out because we're making burger um, buns, okay? Let me show you the thickness of this. You don't want to go for more than about a quarter of an inch thick. See right here? See? Wonderful. Roll off the rest of them and cover them up for about an hour. Allow this beef to cook down like this within the next hour. See, it's done. Let me go ahead and shut this off. We don't have to add any other spices to this because we added the spices when we started and pretty much allow this to cool while I bake the bread. Now look, I got two dozen for the um, burgers and then the rest of it, I just made like these over here right here. I made them like um, breakfast sliders where you could put egg and ham and stuff inside. And now in a 350 degree preheated oven, they go for about 30 minutes and then look at them gorgeous smelling good I love the smell of fresh bread in my in my kitchen now I'm gonna just like pick the meat off the bone right here this pains my heart because the reason I love oxtails is because I love biting the stuff off of the bone I love to taste the flavor that's in the bone so but mom says this is the way I'm supposed to do it so I'm gonna put it in the beans I'm doing this little bit here because I want this to be for my first sandwich because I have to do a thumbnail for you guys so I put all my meat in here and then pretty much just take the, the bread or the bun like this. You can put mayo or mustard if you like, but I want it plain because I really want to taste the meat and the beans that I've cooked. So let me go ahead and just put this here very delicately. I want it to be beautiful. And just kind of load this first sandwich up. Isn't this gorgeous? I am so salivating at wanting to taste this, you guys. It smells so good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on. And of course, I have to take this outside in the beautiful sunlight to take my thumbnail. And then I'm going to come back and taste it for you guys. 
Nothing gives me greater joy than to prepare a meal from scratch for my family, especially if I know that it's something that they're going to enjoy. Everyone in here loves chili, and I've made it time and time again, but I usually use ground beef and ground turkey. So I got really excited when my mom called me and suggested that I use the oxtails. Now you guys can see oxtails are pretty expensive, so you kind of want to do this after you get paid, right? <laughs> Anyways, um, you want to cook the oxtails for at least three hours until the meat's falling off of the bone. And when you put it inside the beans for the chili, oh my goodness, it just melts, let me tell you guys. Um, as you can see, I use pinto beans for the chili. I usually use pinto beans or black beans when I'm making chili because the red kidney beans doesn't stand up as well. It gets too gelatinous. Now, you saw that I went to all the extreme to even make the bread from scratch. I mean, I had time today. I was home today. I didn't have anything else to do. And so I really wanted everything to be from scratch. But you can go out and buy the burger bread, okay? It won't taste, it won't taste bad. This bread though, this homemade bread, oh my goodness, it's so addictive. So I had a lot left over and I made little ones that I could give away to the neighbors and I just made a few for the hamburgers, all right? I hope you guys try this one of these days when you have time on your hands. It took about four and a half hours to complete all of this. And if you notice, I kind of put the beans and the oxtail on at the same time and I kind of waited a little while later before I did the bread because I wanted the bread to be hot when I was making the sandwiches, okay? So this is absolutely wonderful. I'm glad my mom called me with this idea. I hope you guys try it. Tell me how it comes out. Thank you so much for sticking with my channel and being so loyal, especially now that I've scaled back to one recipe a week. It's really helping with what I have to do over here. And I just really love you guys for your faithfulness, okay? If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Please share it with your friends and family for me. And until I see you guys again, take care. Thank you so much for liking the video and subscribing. Please check out my other two channels, the product review channel, Bear Pantry Talk, and come have some fun with my family and me over at the vlog channel, Babs Bear Talk.